down the drum cave. Uh, I'm in the Northeast. It, it's been a stressful week. We had a bomb cyclone the other day. Uh, took out like a ton of trees. 400,000 people lost power. Uh, I lost power for about a day and a half. Uh, there was four inches of rain in one night. Uh, it's been crazy. Uh, uh, there's still people, it's Saturday, and there's still people without power. I, I was definitely one of the fortunate ones that, that only uh, didn't have it for a day and a half. Um, I have a backup generator, but it's still just stressful, and, and you gotta make sure you got gas, and the, and the mine runs quite a while on, on one tank, so uh, I'm not so concerned about it running out, but what if something happened to it, you know? And then uh, I'd be without power completely. Um, I have a pretty good size one. It does most of the stuff I need. Um, but this being a basement, there's always the concern of water. You know, that amount of water in such a short amount of time, four inches of rain, is quite a lot. Um, I don't have water issues down here. Um, I did, when I finished the basement, I did it for my, my grandson and my daughter and then to live down here. So I took extra precautions with it. I did a full perimeter drain, uh, the sump pump battery backup, uh, Wi-Fi detector on the water level in the sump and, and all that stuff. Um, plus the materials I used, I, I made sure that if anything did get wet or whatever, there wouldn't be any mold. But now my concern is now that I get drums down here, obviously the water. Um, again, I don't have water issues. I once in a while after a lot, a lot of rain, I, I will get some water in the sump, but um, it never makes it to floor level. So the four years I've been down here, had drums down here, um, I've never had an issue, but it's always the worry. It, it's always the worry. And uh, when when it's like that, you know, typically the sump doesn't even, it, it's dry 99% um, of the time. So only with, with specific storms like that, I actually take extra precautions and, and put all my drums up um, just in case just in case I would hate for any of this stuff to get damaged not not just the the monetary side of it it's the um I consider myself a steward of these drums a caretaker until the till the next person so I would never want them to to get damaged because of because of me because I didn't take 10 minutes and, and put all the drums up off the floor Every, everything most a lot of the stuff is on racks and stuff like that up up off the floor so uh that's not an issue it's it's just mainly the the uh kids i have set up playing but anyways i figured i'd do a a little video on the last couple weeks prior to that which which were amazing as far as the 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 buying goes i like i said i i buy sell restore um trade all all that stuff and uh I don't think I've ever come across as many amazing kits in the last month or so in the last four years of doing this. I've gotten some really great deals over the years, um, but these were by far probably the best and most unexpected. You just never know what people have when you show up at their house um, or wherever, meeting them somewhere. You, you never know. So I always, I always ask, what else do you have? Or do you have anything else? And I always bring a pocket full of cash. Those are the uh, two things that uh, I'm just, I always do. So uh, I just figured I'd give a little rundown on, on what I've got over the last month and more specifically the last two weeks. Um, over the last month, I, I, I got that Sonophonic kit, which was, um, you've seen a video of it, the red one. It, it, well, if not, you can go back and look at it. It's the Apple Candy red one. Um, I got that about probably three weeks ago. 
literally five minutes from my house. Um, the guy had had it for 30 years. He, he tried to pick up playing again and he just couldn't do it and decided it was finally time to let go of his childhood drum set. Um, so, I mean, that was literally two miles up the street from me in somebody's basement this whole time I've been living here and never knew it. You know, and, and probably like two weeks before that, I got that quartz gray recording custom set that uh, is just a killer set too. Um, that again, the guy tried starting a recording studio. It never really panned out. Um, the drums just ended up sitting for years and years and, and that's where I came in and bought them, uh, struck a deal with them. So going more specifically to the last two weeks, um, I went to buy the Slingeland black chrome set and that's all I thought he had. I, I, I didn't, I wasn't aware he had anything else. So I get there and I noticed right off the bat, he had the Silver Sparkle Slingland set um, and a Gretsch Round Badge Floor Tom. So he asked if I was interested and right away I said, I'm always interested, always. So we ended up striking a deal on the, the Black Chrome Slingland, the Silver Sparkle Slingland, and uh, he actually, um, the Gretsch Round Badge Floor Tom. 14 inch. The wrap was toast on it, but um, if you have an inkling about vintage drums, uh, round badge, 14 inch Gretsch floor toms, always uh, are worth money. In almost any condition. Um, so, you know, I was flying high driving home from that. And then about a week later, I went to answer an ad, I, well, I answered an ad for a snare drum, for a, a Rogers uh, big ass snare drum. And I went to go buy that, because it was, again, local, like five minutes, up, next town over, five minutes up the street. And it was a really good price. I already have a, a Chrome Over Steel Rogers uh, Super 10, but it was cheap and it was local, so why not? So I go to meet up with him for the snare drum and I did my usual, uh, do you have anything else? So he, he says, as a matter of fact, I do. And uh, took out his phone and started showing me some really lousy pictures of um, this Gretsch White Marine Pearl set. So, uh, we're talking a little bit and he goes, you know, they're, they're right across the street in a storage locker. So I'm like, all right, let's go. So when he opened the doors, the door, my, my eyes just lit, lit open. I was, I was in shock. Uh, you know, I was just there for a stand drum. I had no idea I was going to come across a, a 50s Gretsch round badge set. Granted, it's got issues and he was talking crazy numbers at first, but once I pointed out the issues with it he came back down to reality pretty damn quick and uh i made him an offer and he accepted it right away uh, which means i probably could have went a little lower but um i gave him an offer of what um a, a safe bet for me i knew i wouldn't lose money on him um and he was happy so uh we loaded those up and we're talking and he says, you know, I got another Gretsch set. And this is an old time, he's probably 70 years old. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't even play drums. He, he said he tried over the years and uh, just could never pick it up. So uh, he starts telling me about the other Gretsch set. So um, somebody was supposed to come that night to buy it. They were actually on their way already. And I said, that. That's fine if if they don't uh, show up or or whatever. Let me know. I'm five minutes up the street. So in turn, he had the white marine pearl snare drum at his at his house. So we had to go back there. I looked at the other the other Gretsch set, and it turned out to be the '60s um, 
Silvus Voxel that's behind me that I'll, I'll show everything um, in a little bit. So long story short, the, the people showed up, they, they didn't want to buy it for some unknown reason. I think they were really trying to lowball them really bad. Um, so I, again, I made them an offer that if they didn't take it, I would, I would definitely take it. Um, so he called me later that night and said, yeah, they, they looked at it and they didn't want it. Um, which made me a little suspect of it because I'm not a Gretsch expert. Um, Ludwig Slingland is my wheelhouse, uh, but I'll buy anything for the right price. I have an inkling, I, I have an eye for what could possibly be worth um, decent money. Um, so I'm not always positive about uh, exact specific details about what I'm buying, but I, have a general idea of what stuff is worth. And I, my offers are usually safe bets for me that I, I know I will not lose money. And um, I've had a few Gretsch sets over the years that uh, I've never lost money on Gretsch. Gretsch guys are, are crazy. They'll, they'll spend uh, good money on, on uh, vintage Gretsch stuff. They're, um, I know they're highly prized in the in the jazz arena. That uh, jazz drummers love them. So um, I'll give you a little rundown on on the sets I got. I I got these four sets with within my last two weeks, and and I didn't even know three of them existed before I showed up. Um, so it, it was a pretty amazing couple weeks. Like I said, I've had really good scores in the past and um, discovered, I've had this similar um, scenario before where you just get shocked at what somebody shows you, what they have hiding in their storage unit or their basement or attic or, or whatever, stuff that you, you had no inkling they had when you went there to um, buy what you were gonna buy. Uh, so, the gist of it is always be prepared, always have money on you, um, if, if you can. Uh, I know things aren't easy for everybody out here. Um, so I'm gonna stop that there and uh, give you a little view of the sets and a little rundown on, on them. So this is the 70s um, Slingerland Black Chrome set I went to look at, it's five ply. Um, Black and silver Niles badge. Um, killer sound and set. I, there's a video on it uh, if you want to look back at it with uh, more details. Um, and a sound clip. So this is the set he surprised me with, though. It, it was uh, It's a 14-inch Shelbyville badge snare. Um, maple interior. 13-inch tom. 20-inch bass drum. I'd like to find a floor tom that goes with it. So if anybody out there has any leads, uh, let me know. It's, um, I believe it's 60s. It's got the gold and black badge, um, the chocolate interiors. So I'd like to find an exact match to it as far as error and finish. So on to the, to the ones I got last week. So I just gave the stories on them. Um, the White Marine Pearl Gretsch set actually has a super cool set of um, WFL concert toms with it. Um, they're six and eight, three ply with the re-rings. Somebody unfortunately added clip mounts to them, but actually that makes it functional and it is what it is. Um, the white marine pearl is aged almost exactly as the set, so I can imagine they've been together for a long time. Uh, so you get the 14 inch snail with it, 13 inch tom, 14 inch tom, 
16 inch floor tom and 22 inch bass drum. Now that is the Rogers snare I went to look at. Again, I had no idea any of this other stuff existed. I just went to buy this Rogers snare and came home with um, two killer sets. You know, one, one that day and one the following day. So this is the other set he surprised me with. Um, I believe it's a 60s Gretsch round badge. Um, imagine it was probably a progressive jazz set at one point. Um, it's a 14 inch snare, 14 inch floor tom, 20 inch bass. So I believe it's just missing the 12 inch tom. I actually have somebody that's interested in this. Um, I'm a caveman rock drummer. I, I really, uh, I have a few sets with 20 inch bass drums if I ever wanted to just mess around with a smaller set. I don't need anything this nice to do that with. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm just a rock drummer. I, I know these are like highly prized for the, by the jazz guys. So that's, it needs to go to somebody that, that will, um, Put it to good use. Um, like I said, I'm just a steward of these drums, whether I I only have them for uh, a short time or they stay with me in my collection. Um, I try to keep them in the best condition I can for, for the next person because I know I'm not going to be here forever. Um, so I, I got somebody that may be interested in this one. Um, as well as the um, white marine pearl one. Um, so that that's the sets. And it's just again, the whole gist of this video is you never know exactly what you're gonna run into. I mean, over the, the years of, of the buying and selling and trading and all that stuff, I've, I've just been shocked by some of the stuff people show me as you know, I know I said that earlier. Um, I'm still in a little disbelief about about this. But, um, you know, I like I said again earlier, I've come across stuff like this isn't the first time it's happened to me. Um, actually, I had a Ludwig Mod Orange set that was probably a little more of a shocker to come across. But, um... This was definitely, this is, this is one I'll definitely remember. Um, so anyways, take care people. And uh, if you're in the Northeast, um, good luck. And I hope you, you're all doing all right. And I think some people are coming up on four days without power. Uh, so I know, I know it's rough. I, I've, I think the longest I've ever been without power is six days, and that was just pure hell. Uh, even with the generator, it's still no fun. So take care, people. Thanks for watching.